Hello, and welcome to this short video introduction to Weebly, a drag and drop website editor designed to take the guesswork out of website building for people who might not be experienced coders or have experience building and designing websites, myself included. So with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and walk you through Weebly's interface showing you how to navigate page structures, some of the drag and drop editing features, and also where to go for continued support as you develop your facility with Weebly. So to get started, you can just go to weebly.com, W-E-E-B-L-Y.com. Once there, you'll have two options here at the top. You can either log in or sign up. If you've never used Weebly before, you will need to sign up. And this will prompt you to create a Squarespace account because Weebly is part of the Square suite of products. So you can go ahead and enter your information, select your password, and then hit continue. Now I already have a Weebly account. So what I'm gonna do is log in here at the top and get started that way. So I'll go ahead and click next. My password is saved in there. And we'll go ahead and let that work. Now I will say, once you've established an account, if you haven't logged in in a while, you need to have your phone nearby because Weebly does have two-factor authentication. So it may want to send a code, a text you a code that you'll have to enter to gain access. So just be aware of that. And so to get started, um, if you don't have a website yet, you can go up to the top right here and click and add a site. Now mine says freedom movement mainly because that was the first site that I created using Weebly. Uh, yours might say something different up here, but from here you can go to the add a site button and you will then be prompted to select the purpose of your website. Now, in this case, we're not selling anything. We don't need an online store. We just need a website. So we'll go ahead and click, I just need a website. And then from here, you'll be presented with a variety of templates to get you started. So again, taking the guesswork out of some of the design. So the templates range from business, portfolio, personal, event, blog, all sorts of things. What I typically like to do is find something relatively simple because I like to customize my templates. So I'll find something simple. And then from there, I'll go and subtract and add content as I see fit to get what it is that I want to achieve for my website. So let's say, I'm just gonna pick this one and we can preview uh, the template before we use that particular theme. And it just gives us a sense of what we have here. So I'm going to go ahead and pick this and get started with it. We'll start editing. So once I select start editing, it's going to prompt me to create a domain for my Weebly site. And this is where a lot of students get confused because Weebly, you have two options. You have a Weebly hosted domain, which is free. And then you also have an option to purchase your own domain in Weebly, which will take the Weebly watermark off your site and any connection to Weebly uh, will be removed from your URL. Now for the purposes of academic work, I typically just have my students use a Weebly hosted free site. So to do that, you're gonna select your domain name and you're gonna wanna try to put something related to your content that hopefully other people haven't used before. So for my example here, I'm just gonna put Megan Grady, which is my name, and I'll put 337. And let's search and see if this particular domain name is available. So if we look here, we do have some professional domains. Um, if you choose from this list of professional domains, you will then be prompted to pay for one of them. I would advise against that and instead encourage you to use the subdomain option. So if you see the subdomain option here at the bottom and you choose that, that will then have Weebly and the URL. You'll have the Weebly watermark on your website. But aside from that, you'll be able to use the functionality just as you would if you were using a professional domain. So if we want to reload the editor, I can reload the editor for updates, um, which it's doing right now. And it may prompt you to do that sometimes. So now what I have is I have the theme that I've selected on this side. And along the other side of the page right here on the left side, I have a variety of drag and drop editing functionality. And I'll show you a little bit about how that works as we go. But the first thing I want to do is alert you to the page structure. So if you notice, our template automatically has five pages. So it has home, 
services, about, news, and contact. Now, it may be for your project that you need all five of those, or maybe you need five, but you need to rename them and change them, or you may just want to delete several of these options. So what you could do um, is go to the pages area here, and you'll notice that as you click on these, you have options. You have options to change the header type. You have options to just get rid of them. So I'm going to go ahead and just strip out some of these pages because typically for class assignments, students just need a couple web pages on the website to get across what they're trying to do. Um, and so I can delete out any that I don't want. And then I can also rename uh, the pages that already exist. So instead of a home page, I might change this to uh, a welcome. And then I can go ahead and change that and it saved it. And you'll notice that it updated my navigation as I saved it. So that's how you can adjust your page structure to really fit the project and to right size it for your particular project. Because if you only need one page or two pages, you're not going to need to have all five pages in your navigation. So again, that's the pages area. It allows you to edit the pages. You can also go in and edit how they behave, what type of header you're using, which is a little bit more advanced design as you get into it. And then to go back to build, you just select the build. Once you've selected a theme, if you decide you're not happy with the theme, you can always go back in and change that theme. You can pull up a whole host of Weebly themes and pick another one. So if you decide as you're working with it, I really don't like this, it's really limiting me, you can go in and change that. And then we have our build resources. Anytime we want those back, we just go up to this top navigation and click build and we have them here. And they are drag and drop, which we'll look at in just a second. But before we look at that, I wanna talk about subtracting content out of a template. So if you're using a template that you personally don't really like, um, you can start deleting content. Now, this is this particular content piece is a spacer, and that just allows you to create um, what we call white space in design. Even if it's not white, it's just space that's not occupied by text or any other design elements, and that is good to have. So in the chapter on documented design, it does reference um, the importance of white space and having that in your content. So think of the spacer as a way to create white space and maintain white space throughout. If you wanna delete it, you can hover over it and click this button right here and that will delete it out. I'm gonna leave it for this case. Um, I'm not doing any rates or booking on, on my particular site. So I, I am gonna delete that button out. So that's just a button that I'm deleting. And then I can begin to work with the text and make the text what it is that I want. So I am just gonna type in business and professional writing as my placeholder text here. And then I do have some options where I can change the, the um, justification. I could do left aligned, I can do center, I can change the sizing of the text. So if I wanted the text to be a different size, I have the options to bring it up a level or down a level using this. I also have limited formatting options where I can bold, italicize, underline, and what have you. So those are just some of it. We also have a hyperlinking option. So if you put text in there, you can hyperlink it. So let's say that's my example text. I'm doing a, let's say I'm making a companion website to this class. I could do it as business and professional writing. Then as we move forward through these options, like let's say that you've decided this header image really doesn't speak to, you know, business and professional writing. I would like something different. So I can edit my background. And there are a few things that we can do. So I'm going to try to replace this image. And you can upload it for, from a computer. You can uh, pick a URL image, um, what have you. I don't really have a specific image in mind for this, but if I did, I'd save it to my computer and then upload it from my computer to this area. Um, Weebly also provides some stock images um, from which to choose. So you can select from their stock images. Now we have some people who look to be doing some professional writing. Um, so I can, I can preview what that looks like if I want to. Um, the only thing you have to remain mindful of is if you are selecting from their stock images. So let's say I select this. What's happened now is I don't have sufficient contrast ratio 
in my text. So this image, unless I change the color of my text, isn't going to work. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel, which it's not always clear how to do that in Weebly. So that's up here. So I can cancel that. And then I can continue to look for different backgrounds. So if I want to do an image, I can do that. I can do a color. I can do a gradient. Um, so if I want to do change gradient, I can find different colors and use that in my gradient however I want. So you can do basic colors and, and other things if I wanna change the angle of my gradient to make sure that, that that contrast with my text and background is good, I can do that as well. So these are just some things you can do to have a little bit of fun um, with your design um, without getting too carried away. And then you can delete out the other elements that you don't need. I can also go and just change this from a gradient to a solid color. So I could, if I wanted to just make it a solid color, I could do that and voila, we have that. So those are some ways that you can edit this to get it to be what you want. If there's too much space, you can take out some of the spacers um, and that will just change things a little bit for you. So yeah, so that's an example of how to get started with editing your top there. And then here, you know, you have these text boxes. You can go ahead if you just want to delete them out and create your own. As far as the pictures are concerned, if you click on a picture, you have the option to replace the image. So if you want to replace the image, you can select the image from um, something you've uploaded to your computer. You also, if you just hover on it, you can delete the image entirely. So you can delete or replace images. You'll notice if you have two images like I did and I deleted one, this one then gets bigger. And then you can change the text. And then if you wanted to edit this text and make it your own, you simply click on it and then begin to type directly into the box to get that in there. Um, if for some reason, let's say you deleted your text box and you didn't mean to, you can always get the text box back um, by using the drag and drop editor to bring that back on your page. So if you click text over here and you drag it into your editing space, that is actually going to create a new text box for you. So if you delete anything, just know that with the drag and drop, you can bring those elements back into your website. So other drag and drop elements that we have available just so you're aware of what exists. We have slideshow drag and drop. Now a slideshow is gonna allow you to put a variety of pictures in your website. So what it'll do is it'll provide um, an opportunity for you to add a bunch of photos in there that you can then use in a slideshow. So that's one option there. Um, a map, let's say you're making a website about a specific location, you can drop the map into the box here and then you can click on it and put the specific address. So if I wanted to, for instance, drop a pin showing where Butler University is or where the services I'm advertising are, I can go in there and edit the map and say, you know, 4600 Sunset Avenue, Indianapolis, because that is where we are here at Butler. So let's just see what happens. We'll say 4600 Sunset Avenue, um, and then we'll say Indianapolis. Let's see what it does. And there we go. We have that right there, Butler University. We've dropped our pin. So that's another example of an exciting feature that you could drop here. And then if you wanted to be kind of cute with the text above, you could put um, a little text box in there and say, you are here. So just some ways that you can have fun with these drag and drop elements, but don't get too carried away. Make sure that the elements that you're using actually correspond to the content and the message that you want to convey, right? All of that, all of that should matter. And then as we scroll down, we can continue to adjust these elements or delete these elements as necessary. A lot of times you can also resize things. So if you have something that's taking up a big part of your page, you can resize the background after you've gotten rid of the spacers um, and make it right sized for what it is that you need, or you can just delete it. If you don't wanna use it at all, you can just delete that out and continue on with your editing. So again, different options you have for drag and drop. You have title. If you drag that over, it's going to give you a title. It's going to give you a little bigger text to work with. Um, images, text, 
newsletter forms, buttons. If you have a button that you want to create, a button is typically a great way to link to external content. So a lot of times with a button, um, you can change the text of the button. Um, like for instance, let's say I'm creating a more info button and I want to link that out to a website so I can put more info and then I can link in my website URL to make it go there. I just type it in and voila, I have it. So again, really taking the guesswork out of website building for those of us who maybe weren't trained in that and are learning it on the fly. Um, again, these sections and dividers and spacers are good for breaking up your layout. So if you need to add dividers in to break up your layout, you can do so that way. Um, you also have the ability to embed documents directly into your website. Should you want to do that, you can use the scribed document reader and drag and drop that in and put an document in there. You can link YouTube videos, files, um, audio, all sorts of things in there. So really for the purposes of most school assignments, text and images um, and headings and things of that nature will suffice, but sometimes you'll need to go above and beyond with the elements that are on your website. And if you want to do that, Weebly has plenty of options for you to explore there. So that's the basics of how to get started in Weebly. Now, that is by no means um, an exhaustive you know, explanation. If you need to get help, Weebly has extensive support resources so that as you get started, if you find oh, this is not really working for me, I need to get some support, you can type in some support. You can also look to their knowledge base that has the basics of first steps of building a website domains and email. Again, don't let that professional domain thing trick you. You should have a subdomain option under your professional domains that you can use for free. So make sure you're aware of that. Um, but yeah, you can get all different levels of support as you continue your Weebly development. And it is a really great resource. Um, one comparable resource that I point students to a lot is Wix, W-I-X. Um, that is also a drag and drop website interface that you can build websites in pretty quickly um, and to pretty good avail with, without, you know, having the coding knowledge and spending a lot of time learning about that. So that is it for the overview of Weebly. One last thing that you'll want to do if you're submitting a website project for this course is click the publish button and this will make it so your website is shareable. And this will give you the link to share with your instructor. So you can go ahead and just copy the link address and then you have that to submit your assignment. So then your instructor can go in and, and review it. Now, if I click on that link, it's going to open it in a new tab and it's going to give me a slightly different um, way to interact with this website, right? When I click on things, it's not going to ask me to edit them. So if ever, when you're done, you want to make sure how things behave because Weebly in the editing space can actually be kind of hard because when you click on things, it assumes you want to do stuff with them. It'll pull up the editing window. But in the published version, you'll be able to see how it will be experienced by your end user or the audience for your website. So yeah, so once you've published and sent the link, that's really all you need to do. Again, you can go to Weebly support for other resources and continue training in this great resource. So thank you so much for your attention and um, you know, happy learning with Weebly.